Hello everyone, uh, we are visiting uh, the famous uh, designer uh, František Pavlišek and uh, thank you for invitation. Uh, okay. We are happy to, to uh, share the time and be in your house and um, in Russia you are quite famous. Uh, many pilots know you from Axis um, I think who doesn't know uh, it will be uh, good if you tell something about uh, yourself, uh, how long you are in paragliding, how you became designer, how you reached this level, and yeah. please tell us. <laughs> yeah, I will. So, hello everyone. Uh, I started to fly about 30 years ago, almost 30 years ago. Uh, I would say almost from the beginning I started to, to design my own wings. I was just interested to try if I can do that and it was just a short time to become a professional designer. It was one or two years I made three, four designs and they were my friends or people around me coming and asking to for the cooperation to be the designer of the of the brand they were leading or they were producing the gliders and they were interested in my design. So this is the way how I started to be a professional designer. It was already, it was in the time I was still a student of Technical University here in Brno. And yeah, so I'm um, designer of Progliders 27 years or 28 years, something like that. I'm doing the job all the time. Uh, there were moments I was doing that as a part time job. I had, was couple of years I've been running my own paragliding school. I've been working for some other schools before that, but still I was designing the wing, so I can say I'm doing this job for. Yeah. Full, full time. F full time job. So uh, we are now in your office. <laughs> yeah, this is my little office, you know, <laughs> the small, I would call it the, the small, almost the smallest room uh, in, in our house, but that, that's enough space for me. I have my computer here small computer with a big screen <laughs> yeah it's sometimes it's good really to have yeah. office in the house because for example you have an idea in the night time and like oh yes yes i know <laughs> so you should that's exactly so many weird. times many times i woke up in the night and i jump here to my computer and then my wife in the morning when she wakes up she's coming and she's asking you haven't been in bed at all, and so I was for a while, for one hour, and then from 12 o'clock I'm sitting here because I've got an idea, and it's the new glider is almost finished. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. well, sometimes, yeah. mostly it's not that easy, but if there is a new idea, I, I, I'm used to jump yeah. out from bed. This and idea doesn't let you sleep. <laughs> yeah, the idea doesn't let me sleep, and I don't want to let idea disappear yeah, exactly. in the night so so awesome. yeah that happens that happens and uh, mm, as any kind of similar job you can't do it only eight hours per day it, it doesn't work like that most people who are doing something new some new inventions they work on these kind of things they work days and nights they are on the holiday with their family but still there are moments when the brain starts to work <laughs> on the something and there is a light in the brain and they start to work yeah. on the topic. Yeah, that's, that's that's you need to that's reach the idea. right time. Sometimes it's not right time <laughs> for ideas, but yeah, uh, you're like an um, artist uh, designer, let's say. Uh, because it's you know, I'm saying <laughs> to design paragliders, it's anyway more the art than the science. Right. People, yeah. people expect that there is a lot of computers and a lot of scientific research in paragliding designs. Uh, we do that sometimes, but if, if we look for the new airfoil, if uh, we try to improve some really tiny detail to the perfection, mm -hmm. then we use the help of the, of the computers of scientists. But normal work, normal day of paragliding designer, it's something a bit different. I think I will explain that later when we talk. You will understand. 
how yeah. it is. Why yes, it I'm, is. I'm a pilot, but I don't know how it works. Nothing at all <laughs> about uh, construction and so. Uh, so could you tell us? Uh, I think uh, most of the pilots as well would like to know how does it works, how what is the process, and uh, as we can see, you work uh, in a computer as well, and which program you're using, and um, pro progress is not never stop. So I think it's um, developing so fast, and please <laughs> tell us how it works. And yeah, the first time what I have to say, there are two parts of, of the design, and there are several parts. But if we are talking about the design on the computer, there are two parts. One part is that science I've been talking about, what is not very common. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is a typical part of the paragliding design. It's a software built. Different brands are using different softwares. But this one was built by Australian guy Dave Aberdeen. This is very nice, easy to use software designs or created especially for paraglider designs. People very often they think that uh, it's the software or so the computers are doing calculations of the airflow of the aerodynamics that it's not a part of any design uh, of any design software on the market or as far as I know uh, because those softwares are really special so I will talk now about a bit about this software what does this software what that can do okay. uh, that part is that I have an idea a model a 3d model like this one you can see here I have it in my head I have the airfoil shape, the number of, of cells, number of ribs, uh, the, the curve of the canopy, uh, the 2D layout, that means how the tips are back or front, how the tips are wide and narrow. These things I have in my head, uh, the length of line, and all the things are here. And this software helps me to put it into the patterns and into the line scheme so what this software makes if I create this 3D model from my head from my brain mm -hmm. I put it on the computer that means I create this shape you see there and the software makes uh, this TXF uh, pattern file that means this is the file where all the single parts of the glider Details. are made mm -hmm. are prepared for the production these are these parts then are like made apart this file is made apart for example the ribs are made from the hard finish mostly special material for the ribs so these ribs are taken away from this file it's made a separate file for them then they are fixed together by, by the special software again used in the in the factories producing or working with the clothes like t-shirts for example yeah, yeah. the same it's a, uh, those are nesting softwares they put the parts together then uh, with uh, with uh, paragliders you need to rotate some parts sometimes to make it uh, in a right uh, angle to be warp mm -hmm. weft direction to keep a good direction to the warp and weft and then you put it into the uh, laser cutter most mostly in these days it's most brands are already using this technology of laser cutter. They cut the fabric and then the lady sitting by the sewing machine fixes the parts together. So you take these parts mm -hmm. because they are from one fabric. The bottom skins are very often from another fabric. Top skins are made from another fabric. Then there are tension tapes, mini ribs, diagonal ribs. Here are buttons uh, for the lead image support of this part. So this is the what the software makes for me. From the 3D model at the beginning, mm -hmm. it creates from this model I created in the software. The software makes for me this this pattern file. There is another point what software makes. And then you it take gives me those patterns. 
you take the, those patterns and you put it uh, in the 3D uh, model? Yeah. Or no, no. How uh, this is the 3D model uh, yeah, is the at, beginning. In the beginning, yes. At the beginning. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I have to create, that means I have to put in the, in the software, I have to put, for example, the central rib oh, okay. and the end rib. And the software makes the ribs between. Or I can do every rib separately if they mm -hmm. are different. So that's that's for my brain to work with. Yeah, yeah. So I create, at the beginning, I create like all the ribs here. And could, could you show you us how it's with the rib? Uh, looks like with the ribs. And show hide. Yeah. Uh, hide all. Oh, and oh, like current it. view. Show hide. Show ribs. So this is oh. basically, this is the first I start with. Mm -hmm. But before that, I have to create. Bef oh, oh, sorry. Before that, I have to create this look. That means the frontal view of the canopy. I have to mm -hmm. say how the arc should be, how the lines are long, and these points. The second I have to make is a flat canopy. So this mm -hmm. is the second point I make, and the, with a flat canopy, it's already connected where the attachment points are. The position where they are, if it's 10%, 30%, 60%, and the D-lines, or these semi-D-lines, they are 75%, 85%. This is up to me to say this, to yeah. say the positions, say this shape, if it should be more in the front, more in the rear, how wide should be this part, this part, the, the span. This is what I create a setup. And then I have to say how it should look like the shape of the airfoil. And then I put the airfoils here in that shape. I put the airfoils in this shape. And then the model is done. So then I have this kind of model, current view, show height, uh, show all. Sorry. And now I have the model made like this. With the diagonals inside, you can see them. What I can do, I can remove the top skin. Now I can switch it to another view. And now you can see, you can see the diagonals here mm -hmm. inside the canopy. You can see the tension tapes. You can see cross ports through the ribs. Mm -hmm. So this is basically the whole canopy, just without the top skin. Mm -hmm. The software allows to remove any part from this view. I can remove the lines not to disturb me on this picture, but this is a model, so this is, if I make the model, if I make the model complete, this is a model of the glider. And then I can watch it from any other, uh, any side in, in this software. I can say I like it, I do not like it, but you know, if you start to work with this software, and you know how the prog glider looks. For me, no. <laughs> you, can, you can create a glider, but what is the problem? Uh, that was my daughter. Uh, if uh, you want to make a good glider, the first or any good uh, aircraft, uh, there was a professor, old professor, a chief professor of the university I, uh, I've been, and he said it was his very common sentence. If you want to build a new aircraft, uh, and you change more than 20% uh, of the existing one, there is quite high probability that the new one wouldn't fly well or wouldn't fly at all. Mm. So that means if you want to create this model, you have to start with the original model. So for example, if I did Summit XC4, we started with Summit XC3. Yeah. Triangle XC3, Triangle XC2, it's, every time it's like that. When we start with a new glider like Meru, it wasn't a Meru yeah, built from nothing yes. because there was from a two-liner already. Mm -hmm. I made a two li some two-liners in Axis in 2000, uh, 2008. Eight. Mercury. Yeah, there were two, two liners, yeah. I remember, in 2008 or nine. I don't remember. Eight. Eight. I was flying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably 2008. No, so it's ten, <laughs> ten years ago. But when I'm working now on two yes. when I, we were working on Meru, it was built on on base of HXR. But there were many prototypes during that time. Still, we haven't stopped the project. It was still continuously. We were. We have been working on the project continuously. So it's again a project you are working on, 
and slowly step by step you are moving forward you see that the glider is good but has some problem you try to keep the good what is there and you try to improve what is not good and you have a next step next generation of the prototype and that's the way how you work so I say if you take this software I can explain you how to create a glider it would take uh, yeah. two or three yeah, days yeah, yeah. and you can make <laughs> a nice glider there but I'm not sure if it's if it does fly because the first you need to have a good airfoil shape you need to know where the attachment points should be uh, even if you change the shape or the size of the cross ports it's changing the behavior of the glider shape uh, size of diagonals changing the behavior of the glider so if I talk with the professional scientists on aerodynamics they don't like paragliders at all because they say oh, but you're you are flying or you are designing something what doesn't exist in the computer in the same shape as you have it in reality. The reality and the model in the computer is different. Uh, on the Meru, for the Meru and for the prototypes at the beginning of finished stage of the Meru, we have been working with the university. We have a good relationship and cooperation uh, here in Bermuda with the technical university mm -hmm. with aircraft department there and to be able to have a good design of a new model I, uh, we wanted to make the first what I had to do I had to first uh, think about the ballooning the below of each cell because it creates a different shape than the airfoil the rib is the center of the cell is different mm -hmm. and you have to think about the flow there so we made some calculations about uh, around the clean wing with no cells glowing mm -hmm. and then we have made another calculation on the wing with the glowing and we compared it we compared the simulation the software wind tunnel simulation or how to call that so i mean not the wind tunnel as a small model made mm -hmm. but a software simulation how the airflow, airflow, sorry, airflow moves around that wing, and uh, for that I had to as well to think about how the airfoil is flexible and how mm -hmm. it flexes and how because there there are forces on the lines, there are forces of pressure on the canopy, and the canopy deforms according the position of the lines. If you move the line to another position attachment point if you move it front or back and the, the elasticity of the of, of the canopy is changing the airfoil shape and if you create one glider the deformation is different because the forces are and the pressure moves front and back during the flight and during different angles of attack when you are accelerating or not it's moving the the, the, the center of the forces or the mm. pressure is moving front to back and the momentum is changing so that means the deformation becomes different so you, you basically if you do this with your accelerator you, are, you don't have the same airfoil even on a two-liner no matter three-liners or any other wings the, the, so the airfoil deforms starts yeah. to have a different shape so uh, we have made a lot of calculation simulation and I tried to create it the best possible I can, the the form uh, canopy, the canopy. What's an arm? I'm sorry, <laughs> this is my boy. Aha, do iný misky. Budou tady vedle ledničky ve spodním šuplíku. Jo, zkus to najít. Najdi si tam nějakou misku. I'm sorry. <laughs> That was my son. So, if you... Uh, when we tried to make a, a computer model, we had to calculate all the things, make the formed airfoil, then make a calculation, and then from those calculations create a new wing with a new airfoil, mm -hmm. made again calculation and said okay the new wing we like and then we had to make again back 
recalculation to the to the shape of the airfoil. It's so uh, to have it back and with the deformation to be there where the computer find it mm-hmm. to be the best. So it was like step forward, step back, calculation, <laughs> and then step, step back again, calculation. Uh, yeah. So the question uh, from Russian pilots: What have we got in the forums? In the cold winter, uh, so um, uh, as we know, the uh, ascent for uh, this the new model 2018 from this year, but we could note it uh, that the aspect ratio from uh, ascent two to uh, ascent four it's uh, getting lower. So, but the glider is flies better. What is the <laughs> the secret? Why why it's happening? Uh, you know, aspect ratio is very important thing for any flying stuff, any aircraft or anything. You can't cheat as a, as a aspect ratio. That means if you create something with a high aspect ratio and it's created to be, it's designed to be the most performant flying tool or flying instrument, uh, flying wing of this aspect ratio, and it's perfect. So that means it doesn't have any other mistakes. It flies uh, with the best glide ratio, best glide ratio in at least at some speed. No, if we start to think about this, uh, uh, it would be perfect to make any glider with the highest possible aspect ratio. But of course, the aspect ratio brings some problems, some disadvantages. Uh, so that means there is somewhere is the optimum. Somewhere is the optimum for every category and so on. So it's uh, it's very complex problem, and people think about the aspect ratio, but they are missing all the information to put mm. that together. So there is a very common uh, idea or like a feeling or very common information that high aspect ratio means that the wing is dangerous. Mm-hmm. That's not true at all. Of course, the wings with high aspect ratio are built as a more performant wings. But no, mm, there can be two wings with the same performance. One aspect ratio 5.5 and another one aspect ratio 6. But they have same performance. How that could happen? Uh, that means those who built his wing with 5.5, he had an idea how to make the wing uh, how to get the performance of the wing with this low aspect ratio and he was pushing to have very performant airfoil or he was pushing to have optimized uh, wing twist mm-hmm. for the performance and the another designer who made the wing with aspect ratio 6 he had at the beginning he had advantage of performance his glider was more performant than another one with 5.5 uh, but what he did with this extra performance he, he said okay this is a, an extra performance I don't need and I prefer to decrease a bit performance of this wing optimized for performance but a part of the uh, of that my advantage I will use for the safety of the wing So Mm -hmm. that means, for example, now I change a bit the airfoil. I will make the airfoil, I will choose the airfoil, uh, which is less performant, which gives a bit less performance, but much more safety brings, much more safety. And that means, at the end, uh, the same I can do with the wing twist. What is very, very important thing, how how there is the airfoil and the wing, uh, and the angle of attack of the center, and on the tip, because either you build it for the optimized performance, for the the best possible performance, or you change the twist a bit, or you change the airfoil of the end of canopy to a bit different shape, and then uh, you lose a bit of performance this way. 
but you can gain a lot of safety or easiness to fly, handling and so on, so this stuff. So basically this is the way I'm used to work normally. I prefer to make a bit higher speed ratio and then to lose or you know to basically I can say to waste a part of mm -hmm. its performance, the final design performance uh, or this high aspect ratio wing performance to waste it and turn it into the safety handling nice behavior in all the maneuvers in flying and so on so that's the first thing about the aspect ratio so uh, it's not true that if the wing is high aspect ratio it must be dangerous of course there if the wing has a spec ratio of nine and there is well some guests coming <laughs> Give me a second, okay. so I will continue. Thank you. So, uh, to finish the, the aspect ratio topic, or to come mm -hmm. back to the aspect ratio topic, uh, of course, if you have the aspect ratio of, I don't know, nine, there were the wings built like that in the past, and then you Fair compare wings. it, yeah, yeah, and you <laughs> compare it with the aspect ratio five, it would be really difficult to make the nine one with the safety of the standard school glider. But uh, if we are talking about the aspect ratio 5 compared to 5.5, 6 compared to 6.5, it's not necessary that the higher one is less safe or more dangerous. That's the first problem. The second problem is that aspect ratio is not a real... Uh, the value, what is standardly used for the aspect ratio, is not a significant marker of the real aspect ratio. Very simple example, if I cut away the wingtips here, mm -hmm. this glider, this model has aspect ratio 5.6. If I cut one cell from each side, I would get 5.4. And the uh, flying characteristics, uh, the performance mm -hmm. will stay same. The difference would be so small mm -hmm. that it, you can't measure that, you know. But the value 5.4 compared to 5.6, it looks like a big difference. You know, so this is how people mm -hmm. think about. They just read the value 5.4 or 5.6 or mm -hmm. 5.7, 5.3, and they think one is dangerous, one is safe, one is high performance, another one is low performance, but Basically, it can be the same wing, just with a bit different shape of the wingtip. So, mm -hmm. this is as well a question. The wingtip shape on standard wings, that means if we are not talking about the triangle and the uh, man, if we are talking about the ascent, the wingtip mm -hmm. shape is more the question to look nice. You know? So, that's, there is a tiny difference in the performance. <laughs> If, if I cut the last cell away, but it's a very small difference in the performance. So it's a, mm, it's a very complex thing to yeah, make complex, the glider yes. not, not so completely thing, finished yeah. and uh, uh, people, <laughs> uh, as they don't have all, they don't have all this information, they, they are used to make it more simple. So they are used to say the blue gliders uh, don't fly well, <laughs> you know? Yeah think like that, as they did not know that the problem is that blue and green are fabrics with worse quality. Uh, <laughs> just a example, of course. Yeah. So that's that how it works. We have forgotten at the beginning to, uh, to finish the talk, or uh, I went a bit away from, mm -hmm. from this glider plane uh, tool, software tool, uh, and I went a bit to the science. At the beginning I said that the science is um, not very common and then I started to talk about science, so it's strange. So I will say something. So this, basically, this to come back to this so uh, software, it creates a glider mm -hmm. and then the test, we take the glider, we give it to the production, we explain to the production how to make it, how to produce it, the whole technology, because that's very important too. It's not only the design, it's as well the technology. Okay. How, how you put, it's invisible here, but it's a question how you put the rib support, like the, some stickers in, in the ribs to 
made yes. the diagonal, mm-hmm. uh, diagonal direction in the ribs to make it more rigid, to avoid elasticity in the diagonal direction inside the canopy. So, so you on. do this work as well? You yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. you have to do that because this is a yeah. part of the design. So you prepare this or I prepare this, give it the glider with full explanation how to produce it to the production. It's not that complicated because I did it already in past for previous model. So yeah. what I do, I take the previous model uh, technical specification, mm. I say what I want to keep, I say what I want to ca- uh, change, uh, add uh, the pictures, drawing, explanation for the production to make production papers, to make mm-hmm. the whole technology uh, system to build it up, to, to be clear, and so, for the production to be very precise, to keep the right technology, not only for the prototype, but for the future serial production. So it's an important part of that job. And then we have a prototype and we start to fly with it. And then we tune the prototype, that means you move the lines, you make them shorter, longer, because it's a soft canopy, so you can play with it. It's not Mm -hmm. an airplane, you produce the airplane, it's produced, it either flies or not. This one you produce a prototype and then you start to play a bit. Of course you can't make the lines 20 cm shorter or longer, you can't change the attack like this, but you can play half centimeter, one centimeter. Mm-hmm. You can play a bit with the shape, with a twist a bit, because if you twist that too much, then you start to have wrinkles. There are some wrinkles which are, I would call them, intolerant, because you know, if you make the glider totally clean with no wrinkles, it means there is a lot of pressure inside the canopy. There is a very strong inner pressure. That is nice, you have a clean shape of the canopy. Uh, that is good, you pass through the turbulences. The wing is very rigid and can can go headwind in turbulent air very well. But it's very dangerous because then when collapse occurs, the collapse is very massive and strong. So uh, there Again, you have to play as a designer, mm-hmm. and now I'm going away from totally away from science, and I'm going more to experience, side. Mm-hmm. experience. totally to experience yeah. side, because mm-hmm. to play with this softness of the canopy, uh, uh, mostly when someone who is an engineer, technical thinking man who starts with paragliding, he says, "Let's make the canopy rigid to avoid collapses." but you can't make it that rigid to avoid all the collapses. And the more rigid it is, then the collapses are more brutal. That means if, if you live with the nature, if you don't fight with the nature, and yeah. you learn during those, like I did during those almost 30 years, uh, learn how to live together with the nature, with its nature mentality, then this soft collapse behavior, this is very, very important part of the safety because then if you are flying with a wing, but you have to find a good balance and the balance is different for the smooth wing where you don't need the penetration mm-hmm. against the turbulent air or headwind uh, and uh, but you need it on the comp wing and all the other wings, they are somewhere in between so it's the balance how you every wing of the range, how you put it in the middle of these two the borders, as a school wing and the comp wing, and where you find the balance, how uh, rigid is the structure of the canopy. Basically, you need it just for the penetration. You need the rigid wing for the penetration. Uh, when you are flying in turbulent conditions uh, uh, with the headwind, and all the other situations Okay, strong turbulences in thermals, to especially then high spec ratio wings, it's uh, shaky if it's not rigid enough. So that can be another problem. But on another hand, that, that it's shaky by itself, it's not dangerous. What is dangerous when it starts to shake too much and you can either crab out. But basically, if the wing is flying above your head like this in the thermal, it's 
it's not it's nothing nothing that bad mm -hmm. it just look looks weird but it's nothing special yeah it's nothing. just uh, by uh, itself it's not eating, dangerous eating the turbulence we say yeah, in Russia. yeah, yeah <laughs> yes. it's reality it's reality it's and you can yeah you can have this uh, eating the turbulence yeah. effect mm -hmm. we try to have it on the school wings we try to have it because then when you fly on the speed bar and you meet the turbulence you want the leading edge to shrink like this mm -hmm. instead of going through a bit further yes, and then collapse, having a collapse yes. so it's yes. much better if it Important. shrinks because the camber is changed that means if the camber is increased of the of the airfoil uh, airfoil uh, and the camber moves more to the front because this high camber becomes between a and b it's a it's a question if it shrinks between a and b or between b and c because if it shrinks between B and C, the glider goes forward. Mm -hmm. If it shrinks between A and B, the glider goes backwards. What is like you release the speed bar? It's the same effect. So it's very safe effect if you fly in turbulence, the wings make this. Uh, the leading edge deforms. That means it increases uh, the drag, but moves the wing backwards immediately. The lift increases and the drag increases in the same time the wing move backwards and then it stops basically you with your mm -hmm. energy moves in front of the wing so that's increasing the angle of attack that's very safe combination of different effects to avoid front collapse and another topic if the wing is soft between A and B lines the front collapse is much less massive the front collapses they look like even if you have an asymmetrical duck, it looks like a symmetrical front collapse, so the most of the span stays on the trailing edge, and just the leading edge is going not down, it's going in, it, going, it goes backwards. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so it's very safe construction of the wing. So I moved to like, like your question of the ascent. The you know, basically, basically, this way I yeah. went back to, to the ascent because this is the way how the ascent is built.